So, what are NFTs all about? And how can they be used in decentralized finance? You'll find answers to these questions in this video. Before we start, if you'd like to support our channel, we are participating in the Gitcoin Round 7, where, thanks to quadratic funding, even the smallest contribution matters. The round finishes on the 2nd of October. You can find a link to our grant in the description box below. Ok, so let's start with what NFTs actually are. NFTs stand for Non-Fungible Tokens and they are one of the types of cryptographic tokens that can represent ownership of digitally scarce goods such as pieces of art or collectibles. Non-fungible is not a very popular word, so let's see what it really means. In economics, fungibility is the characteristic of goods or commodities where each individual unit is interchangeable and indistinguishable from each other. Like with most concepts, fungibility is best explained with an example. Fiat money such as the US dollar is a good example of something fungible. If Alice has a $5 banknote, she can replace her banknote with Bob's $5 banknote without this affecting Alice or Bob. On the other hand, Alice's favorite limited edition basketball card is a good example of something non-fungible. Each card is treated as a collectible and has individual properties. A card with one player doesn't usually have the same value as a card with another player. On top of that, even when considering two exactly the same cards, other factors, such as the year of production or how the card is preserved, can make a difference. An extreme example of something non-fungible is a piece of art. A painting, for example, is usually created as only one original copy. Now, as we know what non-fungible actually means, let's see what the most common properties of NFTs are. Unique. Each NFT has different properties that are usually stored in the token's metadata. Provably scarce, there is usually a limited number of NFTs with an extreme example of having only one copy. The number of tokens can be verified on the blockchain, hence its provability. Indivisible. Most NFTs cannot be split into smaller denominations so you cannot buy or transfer a fraction of your NFT. Similarly to standard tokens, NFTs also guarantee the ownership of the asset, are easily transferable and are fraud proof. Although NFTs can be implemented on any blockchain that supports smart contract programming, the most noticeable examples are ERC721 and ERC1155 standards on Ethereum. Before we get into the NFT standards, let's quickly recap what ERC20 is, as it will be useful for comparison. ERC20 is a well-known standard for creating tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. Some of the examples are stablecoins, such as USDT or DAI, or DeFi tokens, such as LAND, Wi-Fi, SNX and UNI. ERC20 allows for creating fungible tokens. So all of the tokens that were just mentioned are completely indistinguishable and it doesn't matter if we receive USDT from our friend or from one of the exchanges. The value of each token is still the same. To simplify this explanation, we are skipping the possibility of receiving tainted tokens that would actually make a difference between tokens making them less fungible. ERC721 is a common standard for creating non-fungible tokens. ERC721 allows for creating contracts that can be used to create distinguishable tokens with different properties. A common example of this is the famous CryptoKitties, a game that allows for collecting and breeding virtual kittens. ERC1155 is the next step in creating non-fungible tokens. The standard allows for creating contracts that support both fungible and non-fungible tokens and it was created by Engine, a project 
focusing on blockchain-based gaming. In many games, such as World of Warcraft, a player can hold both non-fungible items, swords, shields, armors, and fungible items, such as gold or arrows. This standard allows developers to define both fungible and non-fungible tokens and decide how many of these tokens should exist. Besides the already mentioned CryptoKitties, there are a few other fairly popular games leveraging the power of NFTs, such as Gods Unchained and Decentraland. Decentraland is an interesting example as the players are able to buy parcels of digital land that can be later resold or even used as advertising space within the game. Other examples include marketplaces for digital art, such as Rarible, Super Rare, and even aggregators of marketplaces, OpenSea. Yet another example of something scarce that can be represented as NFTs are domain names. For example, Ethereum naming service with .eth extension and unstoppable domains with .crypto extension. Some of the NFTs can be extremely costly. The most expensive crypto kitty, Dragon, was sold for 600 ETH at the end of 2017, worth around $170,000. Scarce domain names such as exchange.eth can be worth upwards of $500,000. When it comes to DeFi, NFTs can unlock even more potential for decentralized finance. Currently in DeFi, the vast majority of DeFi lending protocols are collateralized. One of the most interesting ideas is to use NFTs as collateral. This means that now you'd be able to supply an NFT representing a piece of art, digital land, or even a tokenized real estate as collateral and borrow money against it. This sounds cool, but here is the problem. In our standard lending and borrowing DeFi platforms, such as Compound or Aave, the value of supplied collateral can be easily measured by integrating price oracles. These aggregate prices from multiple liquid sources, such as centralized and decentralized exchanges. When it comes to NFTs, the markets for particular tokens are very often illiquid, which makes the price discovery process tricky. To understand this problem better, imagine that someone buys a rare crypto kitty for 10 ETH. This NFT is later used as collateral and the borrower draws 1750 die, assuming that 10 ETH is worth $3,500, and this particular NFT has 50% loan to value. After this, if no one else is willing to buy this particular crypto kitty, we can say that the market for this NFT is illiquid or even non-existent. The only thing we can assume is that the NFT is still worth the same amount as it was last sold for. This is of course not a safe assumption, as the value of NFTs can change quite dramatically. This is also why some of the projects that offer NFT collateralized loans use a slightly different model of peer-to-peer -peer loans. In this marketplace model, borrowers can offer up NFTs as collateral and lenders can choose which NFT they are willing to accept before initializing a loan. The NFT that is used as collateral is kept in an escrow contract, and if the borrower defaults on their loan by not repaying the borrowed amount plus interest on time, the NFT is transferred to the lender. This space is really new, but one of the companies that use this model is NFTFi. Besides being used as collateral, NFTs can also represent more complex financial products, such as insurance, bonds, or options. Why Insure from Yearn Finance is a good example of NFT usage in the insurance space. In Why Insure, 
each insurance contract is represented as an NFT that can be also traded on a secondary market such as Rarible. Speaking about Rarible, we have also recently started seeing DeFi native concepts such as liquidity mining being used by the NFT projects. Rarible, for example, started rewarding its users with Rari governance tokens for creating, buying and selling NFTs on their platform. With over $100 million worth of NFT traded and $6 million just this month, the NFT space is one of the fastest growing niches in crypto and has huge potential ranging from digital kittens to complex financial products. So, what do you think about the future potential of NFTs? Do you know any other good examples where NFTs can be used in DeFi? Comment down below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to check out our grant on Gitcoin. Thanks for watching.